Disney posting a much better than expected quarter after the bell last night, but the real standout was the company's subscriber growth for its streaming services, with Disney Plus rising to more than 152 million global users. Joining us now, Jessica Reef Ehrlich, senior media and entertainment analyst at B of A Securities. Jessica, great to have you. They lowered their forecast, which Chapek just gave at the end of last year. That was sort of an overhang. And I'm wondering, from here on out, what do you what do you see for Disney? Did they clear the biggest cloud and 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 now you're you're positive on the stock. You did raise your price objective. Yes, we raised our price objective to $144. We are so relieved that they finally cleared the deck. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody believed their prior sub guidance of 230 to 260 million by fiscal year on 24, because it, it was made at a time when they had IPL, the Indian cricket rights. India's 30 to 40 percent of the subs, or was in that guidance. So, and they're such low ARPU subs. So it's Financially, they're not that significant. So it, it was just a relief that there's a core Disney sub guidance out there, 135 to 165 million by fiscal year end, and up to 80 million Indian subs or, or Disney plus Hotstar subs. It just it, it reset a number that really isn't even that meaningful. Does it clear sort of the bare argument that the growth is coming from those lower quality Hotstar subs, which are only what the, the average monthly revenue per sub for a hot star is a dollar twenty and for the US and Canada it's six twenty seven. Well it was a dollar twenty only because it was an IPL quarter. It's really like seventy cents or fifty to seventy cents. Ah. So it's so it was that was just an extraordinary quarter that it's it, and it was a very expensive quarter because they had to pay for IPL. So it, it does reset the bar. The subgrowth, the underlying subgrowth at Disney plus the core subgrowth was six million. They don't hit their full content stride until um, the end of this year, the beginning of next year. So really, the subgrowth, the underlying subgrowth is strong. But maybe even more importantly, they raised prices almost 40 percent. So in December, they will introduce the AVOD service, the service subscription plus advertising, um, with a much, much higher price for the subscription service, 38 percent increase. Um, and they raised prices. They've already announced price increases for Hulu and ESPN+. Plus. So there is a path to profitability, and the sub numbers were great even before all of this. Do you think that there's some um, more, you know, room, upward room for price revisions, as Chapek had had mentioned on on the conference call? I mean, how do you think about these price increases coming at a time when the consumer is feeling pinched from inflation? I mean, it, it, it's a great point, uh, but Disney came out of the gate in 2019. It, like they were underpriced, so you know they were they're lower than any other company. They really do have a very wide range of content. Their movies will start to hit. I mean, they of course they're releasing movies, but some of them as the movies roll through theatrical, they will you know hit the service. In addition, they're expanding besides the typical Disney universe, which is like Marvel, Lucas, which is Star Wars, Pixar, and Disney. They're adding a lot more general entertainment. They announced a BTS movie, uh, the K-pop bands. I mean, they're, they're, they're expanding their content, so you get a lot um, for still a lower price than their competitors.